As we near the trade deadline Sunday, is Manny set to start dancing again with Pedro at Shea? John Anderson standing by with ESPN the Magazine's senior writer Buster Olney with the very latest. John. All right, thank you, Trey. We'll get right on it. Buster, a year ago, the Red Sox, they moved Nomar. That works out terrific. Manny, bit of a surprise, but where'd they find the taker? What was the proposed deal? Well, they absolutely got a big bite today, a proposed three-team deal. The Mets, Tampa Bay, the Red Sox. What the Mets would have gotten would have been Manny Ramirez and Danny Baez, a relief pitcher from Tampa Bay. The Red Sox would have gotten Mike Cameron and Aubrey Huff. Tampa Bay would have gotten four top prospects, two from each of these teams. Now, the questions internally, what these teams were asking for the Mets, do we want to do the same thing we did last year, trade our top minor league prospects for older players? From the Red Sox perspective, trading Manny Ramirez and breaking it that unbelievable middle of the lineup, would that have sabotaged your chances for winning a second straight World Series? Internally, they decided, no, this is not something we want to do right now. They went back to the Mets, said, we're going to need more in this trade. The Mets said no. So at this moment, this deal is dormant. If there's not a final resolution by noon on Saturday, all parties agree this deal will not be talked about because it's simply too complicated to get done in a quick period of time. Mm -hmm. If it gets revived, who's pushing that? Uh, the Yankees, perhaps, or anybody else in the East? Yeah, th there's no doubt. Uh, the Yankees would love for this deal uh, to get done because they want Manny Ramirez out of the division. They want to break up that Ortiz and Manny Ramirez. The Red Sox will absolutely go out and try to get another bat. Reliever, starting pitcher over the weekend. Very good. Buster Olney, thanks for the scoop. Thanks, John. Trey. All right, so let's watch Manny Ramirez starting in left field. Twins and Red Sox. Bottom first, no score. David Ortiz facing Carlos Silva and facing him well. To deep center now. Torrey Hunter. Oh, bless his heart. He can't make the catch on the leap. It's a double for Ortiz, but that's not the real story. As Hunter, you see him writhing in pain. Take another look. If you're squeamish, don't. Left ankle into the wall. Yowzer rips the wall, carted off out at least four to six weeks, torn tendons in the left ankle. Next up, Manny Ramirez. What would the crowd do? We call that a mixed reaction here on Sports Center. Manny at the plate, and Silva induces him, the grounder to third. Manny 0 for 3 with a run scored on the night. And then things got downright silly, John. Bottom fifth, no score, men on first and second for Johnny Damon. He singles to right. Jock Jones throws home. Uh, not exactly what he had in mind. Bill Miller scores. Silva picks up the ball and tries to get Tony Graffinino, but that throw gets away. Now Damon is eventually hung up between third and home, and watch this throw. Doink! Hits him right on the head, and Damon scores to make it 3 nothing Red Sox. It was 4-3, and then John Allroot unloads the bases with a franchise record 10th Grand Slam this season for the Sox. They go on to win it 8-5 after the game. David Ortiz upset at the Fenway Faithful. And I don't think it's fair people booing Manny at this point. Why this? Hmm? You haven't got three yet. It's not all the rumors, all the things going out there. I mean, in, in hours, you're going to change what many have done for this ball club, for this city, in hours? What about if they don't get the train? They're going to keep booing him all year round? Somebody give me an answer about that. Well, the perception out there, and again, you know this town, is that people are upset because the story was out there that Manny didn't I don't play. care. They got to sit down and think about what Manny have done here. It's a, it's a rumor out there. But Manny's numbers and what he had done for the ball club, it's been there for a long time. So I'm pretty sure people had to sit down and think about it. And think about Manny must be one of the most consistent players since being here in Boston. His number is always there every year, and this town should never feel that way about Manny Ramirez. How much would it hurt for you personally to lose a guy like him? Like I said before, it's not all about me. It's all about this team right here. We're here to represent this city, this ball club right here. And if man is out of here, it's going to be hard on everybody. Simple as that. You know, man is one of the best hitters in the game. How do you replace a guy like that? That's, that's my question. Yeah. How do you replace a guy like that? Well, keep in mind the numbers back up with... Ortiz was saying Ortiz and Ramirez certainly been productive in the middle of that lineup. The two have combined for 179 RBI this season, more than any other tandem in the major leagues. And don't forget baseball tonight's trade deadline special Sunday, 3 to 5 Eastern on ESPN. All right.
Angels always seem to enjoy their playing time against the Yanks, 5-2 and two so far this season, but they've scored just three runs in the last 46 innings. That's not a lot of production. Top second, oh, brother. Garrett Anderson, two-run homer off Mike Messina. His first homer in 17 games gives him 12 in the season. 2 nothing Halos later in the inning. Benji Molina. Oh, yeah, it's time to play Name Your Molinas, and that's Benji. His ninth homer, he was two for four. Angels, three love. All right, so they match that same output in 46 innings, but they do it in the second. Well, you see it in the boys getting punched around a bit. Irvin Santana, ERA almost 15, five homers and two career road starts, but the stadium sits well with him. Jason Giambi goes down. Tino Martinez can't get it off the bat. Well, actually, I thought Don King is the guy who had all the fighting. Talk. And the hair. Bottom six, Jorge Posada rips one. But here comes Juan Rivera to swipe the guy's Yankeeography. Top play nominee. Excellent play there. That saves a run, perhaps more. Santana, no pup. Six and a third. Six hits, one and run. Angels win it 4 1. Tino Martinez sock. The Yanks only run. Well, the Orioles are sliding. White Sox could clinch the Central any day now, perhaps by the end of this highlight. Top first, Scotty Pods. On second, running for third. They throw, and Sednik is safe, according to Judd. Look at it again. Lee Mazzelli comes out. And Sednik, he appears to be in there. I would say safe. Yeah, Mazzelli argues with the blue, and goodbye to you. Mazzelli's line, a third of an inning, no runs, no decision. All right, Larry Bigby perhaps trading places, mentioned in several trade rumors. Leonard Hernandez, I love your buck. Down he goes. Top third, Eric Bernard watching Paul Canerco, and we set up there and Boy. put it in there. It's a game of inches, and preferably those inches should come from off the plate. Canerco, three runs, shot is 23rd. 4 1 Sox on that one. Bottom five, Sammy Sosa. That is not a home run. Beast, miss off the plate, good things happen. Top seven, same score, Carl Everett. Jurassic Carl gives it a big rip. Carl gonna need to keep that power up. It's Frank Thomas, likely done for the season. Fracture in his left foot. Everett's 15. The White Sox win it. Source, Phil Nevin telling us he was traded to the Rangers for right-handed pitcher Chan Ho Park. Nevin says he'll fly to Toronto on Saturday where the Rangers will play the Blue Jays. Park making $14 million this year, guaranteed $15 million next year. Nevin earning $9 million this year and $10 million next year. Texas expected to send cash to help even out the millions in difference. All right, so the Rangers, Blue Jays, and it was Korea night in Toronto. The Oops! There to see Chan Ho Park. My bad. Except, you know, they shipped him off to the San Diego thing, so bring in John Waston, who was born <laughs> in Virginia, 7,000 miles Missed from Dubai. Park's hometown. That was three. It was very close. Even the metric system, that ain't right. Alex Rios goes down swinging. Waston, four and two thirds, two hits, one and run. Filled in quite well, thanks. Eric Hinsky here, hard down the line. Look at Mark Bashera. Make the stop. Got him. Excellent done. One more look, shall we? The Rangers come out of this with a 4 1 win. Jays, you know, they played 18 innings there on Thursday night. Perhaps just they're a little tired. Loving the wild card. Not so fond of Carlos Beltran. Mike Cameron, still a Met. Could be a Red Sox. Right to the right. Still a Met. Top one, Cameron facing Wandy Rodriguez. And well, asking price just went down thanks to Adam Everett. Greg Biggio against Chris Benson. Benson, 2 and 9 all time against the Strohs and appears to be headed 2 for 10. Biggio, 17th, 1 nothing. Astros. Lance Berkman, we like him a lot. Smashes that one over the center field wall. Close to center. Left center. Berkman's 12th home of the season. 3 nothing. Strohs and Morgan Ensberg. Mm -mm -mm. I really don't have a catchphrase here. It's just a home run. His 27th. Astros up 5 2. Astros, 21st win in July since a record for the month. You know, after sweeping the Nationals, the Braves taking on the Pirates. Bottom seven, Braves down by run. Chipper Jones at the plate with runners at second and third, and Chipper. Lines one to left field, Rafael for call, and Marcus Giles will tally. So instead of being down one, the Braves now up one, two to one. And transition me to the ninth inning, please, right about now. Don't look if you're squeamish. Jay Powell pitching, Braves still up 2-1, and oh my goodness, there it goes in the delivery to Freddie Chances. Delivers and his arm just goes away, holds it in pain. Take another look. He would be assisted off the field by a trainer. So Ryan Dumit facing Mackie McBride, and Dumit strikes out swinging. Next batter, Tyke Redman. He grounds out to second. And the Braves go on to win their fourth straight game all by one run. Everybody in Oakland playing like a Hall of Famer. Rich Harden on the bump. They're on the pill over the dish. Harden part of Oakland's new big three. You got Harden, 6-1 in his last seven starts. Danny Heron, 3-0 in his last seven starts. All the A's pitching well. And then there's Barry Zito, who's actually a member of the old 
big three with Mulder and Hudson. He's 6-0 in his last seven starts. Top second, Harden facing Brandon Inge. Gets him Harden. Not his best work. Five and a third, four Ks, four earned, but he got run support a uh, plenty. Mark Ellis, long ball. The meat hook going back after it. Dimitri Young. Mama didn't make him quite tall enough. Two-run shot. Ellis' third. That made it four of the A's. They would win this thing by a count of eight to four. Indians and Mariners, and things got sticky in the top of the seventh. The Indians are cruising. Ten to one. Shigatosi Hasegawa plunk me to Grady Sizemore. Hasegawa, see you later. Ejected by umpire Chris Guccione. Mariners manager Mike Hargrove says that that's not right. That that's wrong, in fact. We go to the bottom of the seventh, and you know what's happening. Here comes Kevin Millwood. Hits Yuneski, Betancourt, and suddenly can't we all just get along? Dogs and cats living together. Everybody's a spot cross, a tad miffed, a bit irked, a mite perturbed. A little put out, you might say. Millwood ejected. Indians manager Eric Wedge also ejected. Oh. And then no. David Risky goes after Ichiro. Ichiro's in some pain. Risky ejected. Oh, by the way, in the baseball part, Victor Martinez three hits. He's hitting 467 in his last seven games. Your Sports Center Express. Reds, Padres, Adam Dunn, big, strong. One home run, two home run, three, no, two. But that's enough as the Reds beat the Padres 8 3. The Padres continue to just stink up the joint. Marlins Nationals, Josh Beckett goes six in the third innings, eight strikeouts off the DL. Tenth win, Marlins beat the Nationals 4 3. Washington, tenth straight one run loss. And St. Louis, Los Angeles, Jeff Kent goes three for four with two ribs as the Dodgers beat the Cardinals 7 5. And I'm not saying the Cardinals are in danger, but Houston's coming and I, the thing's going to be down to single digit leads. Now, the not top 10 plays. We're going to start at number 10, break tradition. Pirates Marlins. You know, Dontrell Willis, as you well know, Jen, was having some issues with his ERA until he did this. He bonked himself in the head with his bat, and suddenly he throws shutouts. That's very good. Oh, oh, oh. Talk about people who get smacked in the head. Number nine, Portland, Oregon. Lucky Dogs Ice Cream Social. It's people feeding their dogs ice cream. And you know why dogs lick ice cream cones, don't they? They're not lactose intolerant. Uh, number eight, Reds and Dodgers. Rich Aurelia. Well, this pretty much sums up the way things have been going all season long for the Reds. Hey, oh, hey! But I, I mean, that really not worked. Number seven, Dolphins training camp. Lou Saban, Nick Saban. Choose out rookie Manuel Wright. NFL Live host, twice a day. Your thoughts? Uh, there's no crying in football. Done. Pretty much. Apparently there is. Yes. Uh, I know you once were the host of the 12th Annual World Toe Wrestling Championship. Uh, your thoughts on the sharing of foot fungi? Uh, it's soccer, I guess, without the ball. The, the flip-flops make a big comeback. Number nine, Rich Dodgers. Rich really more trouble. Austin Kearns. And it's just some nights are just... Mm -hmm. yes. Have we seen this already? Having a bad 106-game stretch. <laughs> and then there's Puerto Rico and China. Listen, this is supposed to be, I guess, the basketball equivalent of a soccer friendly. Well, not so much. It was the Continental Champions Cup. And when you're playing for a continent, I mean, it's okay to let tempers go a little bit. Here we go, dogs and cats living together. All Hades is breaking loose. Now watch this guy. I have debris raining down on me. I will shield myself with thy seating furniture. Number three, Giants Cubs. That's a chair, by the way. Thank you. Rich Hill. He's a pitcher, doesn't get on the base often. Sometimes he trips there around third. Or he might have just actually, you know, started to slide eight yeah. or four feet early. He wanted to make <laughs> sure it was. he was get out for the throw. How about the Tour de France stage 20? Michael Rasmussen. Oh, that's an alley. We're, we're going to need some of that, what, stuff you Can mercure chrome? Is that what that is? Hey, rub that on there. He got a little push from the fans. Is that allowed? Mark Grace, Dimebacks broadcaster, getting loose. He's in Milwaukee. He's racing sausages. He's your bratwurst there, the Italian sausage coming out. There you see, there he catches him up. He had a hot dog. He had all kinds of stuff. His his team eventually won, which is good for 